Hi, this is Barton with the Snowflake app. Um, this video is about what changes I made inside of the Snowflake Xcode project so that I could build it. Man, I wanted you to be aware because this is in the code base so you know where these, what these things are and where they came from. The first thing I needed was um, a set of icons and I was I found this asset catalog creator. It's free for setting up the initial icons. You drop your image in there, pick your location where you want to build it for your output, and the only option you have, unless you want to pay, is for the iOS icon. But look what you get. You, you drop that uh, folder into here, and then you have all these icons for all the different phones. So that's a requirement to be able to build the app. So at least I have those. The next thing we want to look at is I made some changes so that we, we I have a specific bundle. And so you go to the Snowflake target and you look in the general. And in the general, there's this bundle identifier. And that is your unique, unique ID for your app. So put your name in it, your company or something. But that is your unique ID. The next thing is I um, want to be able to do versioning. And to do versioning, you go to your um, target, Snowflake, and then go to Build Settings. And what you'll see down here in the versioning area um, is that you want to set the current project version to 1, or at least that's what I set mine to start off at. And you want to pick this Apple Generic. Okay, That's going to work with this tool. Now, there's a link in the README for this particular video that tells you how to set this up. So if I'm going too fast, refer to that link. It'll show you the same things I'm doing. Um, the next thing you want to do after you set these versions for your target, you want to go to the info page and you'll have this bundler, a bundle of versions short string and it's 1.0 so, and then make the bundle version 1. So you just have to change those two values if they're not set there already. Now the next thing that <clears throat> we want to work on is we want to have um, the code signing be generic. In, in other words, I, I, I had a lot of troubles with figuring out what was going on with Apple Developer Center and getting a provisioning and a certificate and everything. And I finally just deleted everything, started from scratch, and I'm going to show you how that worked. It finally did work, but um, it took me a long time to get there. So what we want to look at is the code signing for the project under the build settings. And the code signings are up here. I think we can get get there a little bit quicker. What we want to do is just set up that any developer can, can sign it. Now, what you'll notice that is in my keychain currently, I have uh, my identifier. But we're going to delete that in a moment here, or not in this video, but in the next video. We're going to start from a clean slate and create our provisioning profile. We're going to create our certificate. And what I want to have is while I'm doing those things in Apple's uh, online place, the developer center, I, I don't want to change anything in the, in the application at this point. I want to keep it real simple. So by just saying use the iOS developer as opposed to having a specific identity from the keychain, it just makes life easier. Now, one thing you'll have to do is, is show all um, the values here for the code signing because you want to make sure that the provisioning profile is automatic. And you'll see that in the next video how um, having these values set in this at this point to be generic, then the Xcode building process will integrate or interact with Apple Development Center and, and build these values for you. And we'll see that in the next video. But right now, this is the state of Snowflake, the Xcode, in respect to code signing. Now, um, the next thing we want to look at is this app delegate M. What um, React Native instructs us to do, or Facebook does, is to toggle with um, you know comments for the option one of running the bundle from the server, the development server, or option two building the bundle and loading it into your app. And so that means every time you move back and forth, you have to remember to come change it. The better way to do it is just have this debug flag in there. Maybe you've seen it with somebody else, but this makes life a little bit easier. Um, and so that's it. Those are the changes I made to Snowflake's Xcode. And so the next video will go into building those certificates and provisioning profiles.